Okay, check it out. Two iPad 12.9s. Here's the difference here. This is the first generation iPad Pro, 60 hertz panel. Second generation iPad Pro, 120 hertz panel. Hello folks, welcome to the NetCruiser Tech. We're gonna talk about iPads today, iPad Pros in particular. Two iPad Pros, and I bet you at first glance can't tell what is what. All right, first of all, this one is a 2015 iPad Pro 12.9. This one is a 2017 iPad Pro 12.9. Difference in color temperature is because this one has true tone display, so it adjusts to the lighting conditions of the room and adjusts the color temperature significantly. You can turn that feature on and off, but overall, these are very similar form factor machines, but there's big differences in performance, and that's what I'm gonna talk about and why I've decided to upgrade to a 2017. I've had this 2015 iPad Pro for quite a few years. I picked it up from my favorite surplus shop, Surplus by Design. Surplus by Design is Staples Canada. So this one is an X display model. And with the iPad Pros, you get quad speakers on each corner, so it's always stereo no matter how you orient it. And the other big benefit of iPad Pros is just additional performance and bigger, better screens. So the 12.9 is a fairly huge iPad. I really, the size of it, this is bigger than my Microsoft Surface, which it becomes a little bit unwieldy sometimes. And also when you add it into a case, it does add a bit more bulk, but they are super nice. And when this came out, this was the first ever iPad Pro. And it was also the first iPad, I believe, that worked with the Apple Pencil. So that's when the Apple Pencil came out. It's probably dead right now because I have not charged this in a long time. This little clip I did add on as an accessory, but uh, normally iPad Pencils, you just have to charge them up through the USB port on the bottom, the lightning port, I should say, and that's how you get them to work. Nowadays, these pencils now work on even the base model iPad, so they're a pretty cool utility that you can get if you want to have the ability to draw on a tablet. At this point, iPad Pros, this first generation, has pretty much been eclipsed by the newer models. There's a completely new iPad that's out now that doesn't even have a home button. It has the Face ID feature like an like a iPhone, as well as the design has changed. The nice thing about the 2015 to the 2017 is that the industrial design changed ever so slightly where most case manufacturers whoops they have magnets the industrial design on them changed ever so slightly that most ipad pro 12.9 cases work with both models this one does i'll put a link in the description for this one so this is a case that i'm able to transfer between both of these and i am keeping it sorry it's dirty it is hard to clean this fabric it gets a little bit dirty but uh, overall, this is a pretty cool case. I'll show you it working after, but it does work with both of these iPads, so I am keeping it, as well as it has pencil storage, which I do really like. Okay, back to the iPads. The biggest difference in, in them on the rear outside design is the cameras. The 2017 has a raised lip camera with a flash. 2015 camera is the basic iPad camera that you get even on the base model iPads right now. Uh, other than that, Outside design-wise, they look exactly the same. The only thing that changed on the 2017 was camera placement and mic placement. Everything else is the same. The big difference is what's on the inside and, and the screen technology that's used. The other difference is weight. The 2015 weighs 30 grams more. That doesn't sound like much, but when you're actually holding onto it, 30 grams less is significant. You do feel it, it is noticeable. The other difference you might be seeing in the screens here is that this one does have a tempered glass screen protector on it, so that does add a bit more of a reflectivity than it should have, but I'm not removing it. This one I also picked up from Surplus by, by Design on eBay as an auction, and it was a used unit, but I picked it up and it was in like mint condition. Works great, and it came with this tempered glass screen protector, so I don't want to remove it. Why did I buy the exact same size of iPad, only the next generation up? Even though it was a two-year difference, this was the next jump up in iPad Pros was the 2017. The main reason was for the Pro Motion display. The iPad Pro 2017 has a 120 hertz refresh rate. The original iPad Pro 2015 has a 60 hertz refresh rate. You can see it immediately. This camera is recording at 60 frames a second, 60 hertz, I'm moving my finger. If I move it fast, you can see it kind of jump around. If I do that same thing over here, you can see how much more fluid it is. The smeariness, if I go slowly, you can almost read the text as I scroll around. On this one, if I do it, you can see it kind of jump. This is a 240 hertz video.
It might not be coming entirely through on camera, but it is highly noticeable in person that this one is when you start flicking around and doing fast motion, it runs at twice the refresh rate, which means twice the pixels to your eyes. 120 frames a second versus 60 frames a second. That's the primarily reason why I did it, as well as this one has twice the base storage. This one only has 32 gigabytes of storage, which was very limited for an iPad Pro. Although for the most part, I never did fill it because most of my iPad Pro use is mostly just watching videos on it because that's why I bought the bigger one is so I could get the quad stereo speakers and have a bigger display for watching videos. The 2017 is better in every way. For playing games, it's twice as fast as well as the refresh rate of the screen is just buttery smooth and it has better battery life twice as much storage and CPU performance and GPU performance is two times better than this one. So I just wanted to show you that if you're gonna buy an iPad Pro, if you're looking at older used ones, try and get a 2017 iPad Pro because the experience is much more pro. The whole smoothing of the motion with 120 Hertz is highly noticeable as well as is the performance improvements. I would say at this point, buying a 2015 is likely not recommended. It always did kind of chew through battery really fast. I was surprised by that. It's been sitting not doing anything for a day or two and it's already down to 73%. This one has been used for a day or two and it's still at 78%. Kind of the efficiency improvements that's happened over two years. So here's my 2015 and I've just put my 2017 in the case. This case does have the magnet wake lock feature so that it can auto, auto unlock your iPad for you, which is awesome. And uh, as for design wise, I really like that it has the pencil holder built in and it has that type of traditional iPad type of stand where you can triangulize it. You can use it in landscape mode like this, or you can also, also stand it up like this and it holds into position with magnets on the triangular cover. The reason why it works for both iPad 2015 and 2017 Pro 12.9 is because they made these cutouts bigger and they added additional holes. So on this second generation iPad Pro, it needed the bigger camera bump for the flash and it needed a hole here for the microphone. On the 2015, it just had the little camera and the microphone was where the flash was. So they were able to just make those two little minor differences and it worked for both generations, which is rare in iPad land. Usually every model of iPad has a different case support, but this one worked. 2015 to 2017 works for both. The first gen Apple Pencil still has the most ridiculous charging method ever, but at least with this case, you don't lose the cap because it has cap storage, which is nice. Alrighty guys, I think that's pretty much it. We're gonna end this video here. It was just a quick, simple one. I just wanted to talk about iPad Pros for a minute. I am gonna be selling the 2015. It's likely already gone by the time this video goes up and I have upgraded to the 2017 iPad Pro, mostly for the 120 Hertz display. It is awesome. I do really like it for playing games and stuff. Also, these 2017s, they're so fast now that then with good enough graphics, it really does rival something like an Xbox 360 from just a few years ago. It actually has better performance than an Xbox from last generation. It's pretty impressive. This is on the 2017 playing Need for Speed. Anyway, you get the idea. It is noticeable. The extra smoothness is noticeable. This is not a, probably a not a great game to show fluid motion, but it would be if I could get it going right. But anyway, for any games with fast motion, I will say that that 120 hertz display is worth it. As well as in the future, I am going to be putting out some videos about high hertz displays. I have decided to upgrade my monitor uh, in my media room to a high hertz display, so I have a video coming about that in the future. All right, guys, if you enjoyed this video, hit that like button. If you're new around here, subscribe. If you want to talk to me, leave a comment down below. And as always, thanks for watching.